All right, so this isn't part of the tutorial, but I was messing around with the code, you know, trying to figure out how to do things. I ended up with this. <laughs> Look at him go. <laughs> He's spinning so much. <laughs> it's time to work on some animations, because right now our bird is looking kind of dull. Right now he just kind of bobs up and down. He doesn't have any animations. He doesn't do the the iconic tilt up whenever he flaps up and the, the tilts back down when he goes in for a nosedive. He doesn't do that yet. So that's what we want to make him do. So it'll feel more like genuine Flappy Bird. Before we start, something I want to do real quick because it's been in the back of my mind for so long and I haven't fixed it. Right now, if I click on play and I just let the bird fall, nothing happens. The game doesn't end or what, it just keeps playing and that we can't have that. That is just a complete oversight that I didn't do in the collision tutorial. So I quickly want to do something like that so we can right click in the hierarchy. I'm going to create an empty and I'll call this something like death plane. I'm going to reset the transform and I'm just going to tag it with something, maybe an orange diamond over here. That way we can just see it when we're moving it around so we know where it is. What we're going to do here, what this death plane is going to do, is it's going to stop the bird from falling through the ground and just having the game continuously run because we don't want that. We want to trigger a game over when he falls down. So I'm going to position this somewhere down here and I'm going to give it a Box Collider 2D. Now the Box Collider is really small right now. We can hit the Edit Collider button and we can drag this around. Hold Alt to scale on both sides if you want. But you really don't need to because the bird is kind of hanging out over in this section anyway. But I'm just going to scale it around there. I'm going to set it to Is Trigger. That way the bird doesn't actually collide with it. He enters through the collider. And now all we need to do is tag it with Pipe. Just like the rest of our pipes, they're tagged with pipe, which allows the bird to recognize that it's hit a pipe. This is just a little shortcut that says if the birds hit this, it'll register it as a pipe, even though it's not technically a pipe. It'll register it as a pipe so it knows to use a game over. So now if I hit play and we let our bird fall, it'll go below the bottom of the screen, it'll enter this trigger, and then it'll be a game over. Now we need to make the iconic tilt up that the bird does whenever he flaps. Whenever he flaps, the bird tilts its head up and then it tilts back down and kind of nose dives down as it starts falling. So that's what we want to work on now. Let's go to our bird's flow graph. And how we're going to do this is we're actually going to base this off the bird's velocity. When the bird jumps, its velocity goes positive. It goes to five. We add five to its velocity, which makes it go upwards. And as it falls, it'll go down to zero and then go in the, into the negatives. We can use that to change the bird's rotation to give us the effect that we want. So we're going to create another update event. We already have one here, but we can create multiple. So we can right click, look up update, add our update event. Now the very first thing we want to do is grab a set rotation block. So we can drag this out, look up set rotation, and we want the one that says transform. And you may notice that there's a, a weird node on this, this little triangular ruler. This actually means quaternion. You don't need to know the ins and outs of a quaternion, but if you choose this create quaternion block, you can see all the different nodes. So there's X, Y, and Z, which corresponds to the bird's rotation, X, Y, and Z. And then there's a W. This W value is actually a scale, which we will be using later. You don't need to know exactly how this works. Just kind of follow along. Um, but I have this little algorithm that'll have the bird rotating the way we want it to. So we want the bird rotating on its Z axis because that's how the bird spins. You can see if I change the Z axis here, you can see the bird spins a little bit. So we want the bird to point up when we jump and we want him to go back down. So we are gonna be plugging all of our math into the Z node here. So first thing we can do is drag out our Z and we're going to grab a divide node. Now we're going to be dividing our velocity by a certain value. That way we can keep it below one. Right now when our bird jumps, 
the velocity is equal to 5, and we want to keep that at 1 and below. We want to kind of keep it in a, a spectrum of between 0 to 1, that way the bird doesn't spin out. So for A, we're going to plug in our velocity there. So we can do, we can right click, add unit, we want to look up get velocity. Now we want the rigid body 2D get velocity because rigid body get velocity that's for 3D objects and we don't have a rigid body on our bird we have a rigid body 2D. So we can grab rigid body 2D. Now we can't just plug this into our A because right now this is grabbing both the velocities X and Y values. So it's returning a vector two, which is basically a data value that holds both the X and Y components. We wanna grab just the Y because that's what's being changed whenever we click. So we can drag this out. We can go to vector two and we can scroll down and we can see get y right here. That's what we want to grab, and then that can be plugged into our A. Now for our B here, after some experimenting, I found that 10 works the best, and then for our W, which is our scale, 5 worked pretty well. So if I go over to our Flappy Bird now, and I click, we should see our bird doing its little rotation pretty well. And you can see when we click, it snaps up to point up a little bit. And then when it falls, it starts nose diving a little bit and then goes back up whenever we click. Of course, you can always experiment with how it looks. You can change these values around, change it to how you see fit, whether you think this looks bad and you wanna, you wanna redo it. You can always change these to get a more des desirable effect. So now we need to give our bird an animation because right now he's, kinda, he's still kind of stiff. His wings aren't moving. So in our Flappy Birds assets pack that we downloaded in the first episode, there are a bunch of bird sprites. There's one for the blue bird, the red bird, and the yellow bird. Since we're using the yellow bird in this case, or at least I'm using it, we want to get all three of the yellow bird sprites. We only have one in right now, which is this uh, wing up. So we are going to grab, I can see my window here, I'm just going to grab the other two that we don't have and we can drag them right into our asset window. Now make sure that both of these are set to point for its filter mode as always because it is pixel art and then apply it. Now this animation is super easy because the bird only has one animation so what we can do is we can click on our bird we're gonna go to our animation window. Usually your animation window might be docked down here. I slid it up here because it's easier to use for now. Um, but we're going to create an animation. We actually don't need to do any code for this. It's the animation window runs fairly separately. So I'm gonna call this flap. I'm gonna call this flap. You can save it. Now, this may look a little scary, but don't worry, it's fairly easy. All you gotta do is um, basically whatever of these images you drag in here. For example, if I drag in our first animation frame here and I drag it in, you can see that it creates these things. These are keyframes. Whenever your cursor hits one of these keyframes, it will update our bird to whatever's saved in these keyframes. So let me drag in our second bird here, our second frame, and you can kind of see what I mean. If I drag my cursor along here, you can see that our bird doesn't change over here. He doesn't change, but as soon as my cursor rolls over these second keyframes, the frame changes to our, our wings down. So keyframes can all do all sorts of things. You can keyframe a character's position, its rotation, you can keyframe pretty much anything here. Um, you can just hit the record button and change something in here and that'll keyframe it. But in our case, we don't want to mess with that. Right now, we only want to deal with our sprites. If you want a detailed look on animation, I recommend Bracky's animation video. I'll link that in the description if you want to learn more about this. Um, but yeah, we're going to do something super simple. I'm just going to drag our last frame in here. So now we have our bird flapping down. However, we want to make it... Right now, this will loop. So if I hit play, you can kind of see the birds doing the flapping. But it's... um kind of snapping back up. You can't really see it because it's a little fast. If I spread out our keyframes a little bit, you might be able to see this better. But you can see, yeah, right there. It doesn't exactly look very clean, does it? Because the wings are going down and then snapping back up. So we want to basically have the wings flap down, 
and then go back up. We can do that super easily by just kind of like repeating the frames. So if we wanted to go back up from here, we can just drag in our wings down frame or so it goes back up like that. And then we can just drag in our final frame. So you can see he's kind of flapping. Um, one thing to note is that there's a little bit of a pause when his wings are up. That's only because it's actually like one millisecond. There's one millisecond of space you can see right up here, which um, means we can just set these keyframes back one one little frame here. It's a bit a bit nitpicky. It's a bit of a small adjustment, and uh, I, it might be a bit confusing. But all you gotta know is if it's set one millisecond back, it's just gonna look a lot smoother. I'm gonna move these in a little bit just so I can have a more faster animation because the, the, the bird flaps his wings pretty fast in the game. So that's actually all we need to do. Uh, there actually is an animator window up here next to the scene view. This is where you would order all your animations. So let's say you had s several different animations. Maybe you have a jumping animation, a walking animation, running animation. All of that will be handled in this window. Once again, I'd recommend checking out Bracky's video because he goes over all of this in pretty good detail. So usually you would, you know, make transitions and go to different animations, but we only need our one animation. And basically what this is saying is entry. That's saying on the scene starts. So as soon as the game starts up, it'll transition into our flap and this flapping animation will loop. So we don't need to do anything. It'll just keep going until we just close the game out. So now if I go back to our game and hit play, you should see our bird start flapping his wings. And there we go. We got a flapping bird. So thanks so much for watching this tutorial. Uh, if you enjoyed, then like the video and then subscribe if you're ready for the next tutorial. Because I think the next tutorial, I am thinking I should go over some sound effects. Because right now our game is looking good. We have the animations, we got the pipes moving. Uh, we don't have a background yet, but I'm thinking I'll do a final video where we do touch-ups and then build our final project. But before that, we need some sound effects. Because right there, you heard there is no sound. We don't have any sound. So sound effects make the game feel so much more polished than it already is you can have amazing art but sound effects really tie the game all together so thanks so much for watching if you haven't already please subscribe and like the video because that always helps the video out so thanks for watching and i will see you later